Welcome to Tough Crowd, and I use the term crowd loosely. As you can see, we had to get our staff to sit on the left side of the goddamn bleachers. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> We're already finished. We just started. All right, the goal of this show is to get people to talk on TV the way they talk in the privacy of their own homes, without regard to their physical safety, their careers, or their car windshields. We live in a country where people are afraid to say how they really feel. Ironically, the only place I hear the truth is in comedy clubs. Comedians may be perverts, lazy, selfish, and bad dressers, but they don't lie. So if you can't watch people's honest opinions without fighting, booing, or boycotting, you can check out a repeat of The Gilmore Girls on another channel, stupid. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, to me, the perfect example this week of collective denial is the Central Park jogger case. It's a loaded story. It's got race, sex, and crime. All the ingredients for a nice, juicy riot. You remember the story 12 years ago, the five black kids were convicted of raping the white woman in Central Park, leaving her for dead. Recently, the convictions were overturned due to the confession of another guy. This story has everything that nobody wants to face. Race, crime, and the historical false accusation by, of black men by the justice system. If these kids were white and the girl was black, of course, there would be no problem. Just protest in the street. <laughs> Feminists be angry. But there is a conspicuous silence as the white community sits tight-lipped and quiet, waiting for this to go away. Now, let me tell you something. Look at these kids, okay? This kid definitely did it. <laughs> this kid, he just went along with this kid. He does whatever this kid tells him to do. <laughs> This kid would have raped me if I was in the park that night. He's a little this kid, that rape was the nicest thing he did that day. This kid. I don't know about the rest of them. Look, there's only one left, but Keith, sadly, like it or not, you are the representative not only of yourself and being honest on the show, but of the entire black population of the United States right now. <laughs> Hope that's not too much pressure. Um, if you will admit right now, give me two of these guys that did it, I will get my people to drop the civil lawsuit against OJ. <laughs> I feel like uh, Jackie Robinson, man. <laughs> All right, I'll give you those two, but I want you to give me um, Diallo. Okay. Yes. We already uh, got him. Louima. Two undisclosed police beatings. <laughs> plus, the fact that on The Sopranos, a show full of Italians, two black guys get whacked. What the hell was that about? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, I love that diverting attention from the black rapists. <laughs> Listen, you know how, how could they? How could they uh, vacate that sentence? How could they let those guys go? First of all, they said it. They, Listen, you know, as a married guy, I know what a forced confession looks like. <laughs> that was not a forced confession. Those guys confessed to it. Uh -huh. So did a guy also confess? How about DNA? They found the DNA in the woman's sock. Yeah, you know, they found it in her sock. It took them so long to find it because they didn't know to look in the sock because black guys have big penises. <laughs> That's why they have that DNA really in the sock. Okay. Right, okay. exactly. You know who should oh, that's be? Nice. It's the female <laughs> DNA, the new uh, the uh, assistant DNA. DA? Yeah, she should be. Um, she's the one that should be made to jog around the park at midnight with nothing but a T-shirt and a scent of fried chicken on her. <laughs> It's tough oh, crowd, folks. Show, folks. It's tough crowd, folks. That's how it's gonna be. Look, Get used oh, to it. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Now, Keith, do you feel that these guys are really innocent, or do you think these just pay back for like the Scottsboro Boys and past things? Yeah. Well, past things you gotta realize, man. Like they say with the corporations, all these guys are getting away. Like billionaires getting six years. My cousin did 12 years for stealing a Marshall Falk jersey from the damn Marshall <laughs> store. <laughs> These, these guys confessed, you know, some of these guys confessed to raping this woman in front of their own mother, okay? Yeah. I mean, my, my mother once found a Playboy under my pillow. I'll deny it to the day I die. Yeah, but I have to say, I think they were doing, they were obviously doing something wrong. They were not home baking yeah. cookies with their mothers. Wait a minute, why are you guys looking at me, first of all? <laughs> well, I'm not one of the joggers. No, I'm no, Those guys did something I will give wrong. you the guy from Tyco. If you give me this kid, I'll give you Ken DeLay from Enron for this kid. <laughs> No, so trade, seriously, no. they were doing something wrong. They, I, they, they shouldn't be blamed well, for that. Well, let's talk about, to me, that was a phony story because of the way it was handled. It was very polite and nice. You said the phony story is the corporation way. Anybody else? Have, what's yes. you, to your idea, what's a phony, typical media story where they just try not to offend people? Well, the, the fact that they put up that the fat people should have handicapped parking spots. My brother, 
is in a wheelchair, and I don't think he should give up his pocket spots for some fat, sweaty guy with a gland problem. Well, who's going to argue with somebody that starts a sentence with, my brother's in a wheelchair? Exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's all my manipulation. I was just like, my brother's fat and he's in a wheelchair. That's the only way he can top her right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let's face the facts, folks. If you grew up white, you have a different idea of truth than if you grew, grew up black. Everybody sees things according to their perception. That's why we have separate networks. So stay right here. After I've given you all this wisdom, the least you can do is sit through a couple of commercials and walk by their crummy products, can't you? Well, that'll be cut. <laughs> Let's talk about religion. Between Catholicism and Islam, the devil has had a couple of good years here, okay? I'm talking about the priest scandal. It was very shocking. Well, it wasn't shocking if you grew up Catholic. We always knew there's that one priest you had to avoid in church. We had this one guy, name remain nameless. He'd walk in Sunday morning, he'd be on the pipe organ playing It's Raining Men. And he walked in. And this guy, this is a true story. This guy actually uh, helped me pick out a confirmation name. I found out years later that there's no saint named Miss Saigon. Seriously. <laughs> Now, he also gave, he gave it away, he gave me with 10, 10 Hail Marys and 10 clank, 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 went the trolleys. Okay, I'm pushing it, but you know what I'm saying, folks. Let's go. The, uh, I, now they're coming up with, they're going to refurbish the church. They want to start changing it a little. Okay, I got a couple of suggestions if you want to lose all that scandalous behavior. You might want to lose the idea of the guy with not allowed to have sex in a dark room hearing your most secret confessions of your life. Maybe we'll get rid of the jewelry and the red robes. Or at least cut out the kneeling. Can we do that for a couple of years? Just How about the kneeling, waist high, mouth open, tongue out? You know what I'm saying? I don't think I could resist a nice prime older boy if, that, if I was in that situation. Now, Nick, let me ask you something. You're a Catholic in good standing. Is Catholicism finished? I didn't think it was. I, until I went to church yesterday, there was like four people there. It looked like one of my shows at the Chuckle Hut in San Antonio. It was like... <laughs> You know, I think the Catholic Church, it's like the Crunch Gym or the YMCA. As long as it's in a place to hang out, it's always going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about, folks. Oh, anybody else want to add it to that? I think Catholicism was going in the right direction after Vatican II. They were making a lot of reforms. And they got this new pope, who's Polish, by the way. And, you know, the guy went completely backwards. I mean, now it's, you know, no birth control, no sex before marriage, no, no homosexuality, no divorce. It's like the only Catholics getting laid are the priests. No. <laughs> That's not necessarily true because I went to Catholic school for 12 years and we couldn't have sex, but I could have an orgasm from dry humping, so. Do you still have the uniform? Yes. I think, uh, Colin, I think that, <laughs> I think the church has always been in trouble as far as I'm I'm not from the Catholic church or anything. I'm from non-denominational. That's my church. Oh. That's the name of it. Yeah. That's what it was called. Who's the leader? And, um, you? the reverend, my brothers. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Didn't you know that's, tell me that reverend story. Well, the thing is, it's like when I was in church, I remember years ago, this was like in the, in the 80s, early 80s, uh, we had a visiting reverend come to the church, and I guess the preacher shorted the visiting reverend like fifteen hundred dollars the reverend come back and like yo where's my money the guy's like i ain't got your damn money this is a reverend arguing with another reverend you know i don't have your damn i'm a reverend pull out a pistol and shoot him right in the ass <laughs> that's oh, see that's how we should settle things in catholicism now let's talk about other religions judaism religion or multinational corporation <laughs> cheap shot <laughs> Okay, what about Islam? Do you feel like there's a double standard? Like, if you say Catholic jokes, everyone laughs because it's funny, and they did do stuff. But if you bring up Islam after 9-11, it's like, hey, leave them alone. Jeez, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> All right, it's not really a question, but go ahead. <laughs> well, this is what... Uh, it's true. I mean, uh, I, you know, I, the guys that hit the towers, okay? Yeah. Right? The terrorists. Yes. People go, yeah. well, you know, not all Muslims are terrorists, but every terrorist that hit those towers are Muslims. I'm doing my math. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's, it's like we, we always compare all the religions, and they're supposedly peaceful religions, but I mean, you look at Islam, I mean, Catholicism may be pretty uptight, and it may produce some pretty frigid chicks, but... <laughs> but... but 
Bridget. <laughs> but Islam, I mean, you know, any religion that says it's oh, okay to kill a woman with rocks for showing too much forehead, you know, that's that's too much. Uh, exactly. How do you know I'm frigid? That's what I want to know. They, mean, they see an Amish woman, they think it looks like little Kim in a Mulan <laughs> movie. <laughs> It, to me, Judaism Ju Judaism is the best religion. Really, Judaism, because the Jews are they're very happy. Judaism is like a great religion. It makes you feel they good about yourself. They don't shower. Judy, Jews don't. He <laughs> means you want the duck. I mean, you're sick. He <laughs> told me that. Know, you know, these guys—they go to temple and you feel good about yourself. You're the chosen people. You know, it, it builds you up. You feel good. You go back to work on Monday. Control the media, guilt-free. But the, you know, ca Catholics—you go to church as a Catholic. What do you hear in a Catholic church? You're garbage. You're not worthy. Get on your knees. But right. maybe it'll be better when you're dead. Right. It's not a happy religion. <laughs> But people still argue that the media is not run by Jews, uh, which I believe. Do you ever read the credits after a sitcom? It's like Schindler's List. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, 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 I think we... No, I do. I... Wait a minute. Are you sure you want to say something and follow that? Yeah, go ahead. Try it. Well, I think that the Jewish people, they, they bring up the kids better than, they, than the Catholic people do. They teach, they, they sacrifice a whole generation so that the kids can go to college. Catholics are taught the poorer you are, the better chance you get to they get into heaven. They sacrifice a whole generation. Yes, what they do. They let the kids go to college. They'll give up their own wealth so that the kids can go to college. And Catholic, they That's say, Chinese, the poorer you are, the better, chance you have, <laughs> the better chance you have to get into heaven. You know who made that up? The Jews. I've never met a Jew oh. that didn't go to college. <laughs> exactly, that's my I like point. Because I never met a Jew who didn't go to college. Just takes a sip. Well, you might say, uh, how did this go from being like a nice uh, Catholicism finished subject into a, uh, a beer hall in 1932 in Germany? <laughs> well, that's one of the problems with the show. It goes the way it goes. There's really nothing you can do about it. Um, anybody have anything to say about Buddhism, Hinduism, anything like that? Man, Buddhism. me neither. Which you, you know what, folks? This is actually what we're having right now is called a lull, okay? <laughs> this is the part of, this is what network executives all over the world spend millions of dollars to avoid what's happening right here, right now. <laughs> they would rather see me, like, kill a kitten than die, have this silence right now. <laughs> Look. Oh. That looks like you when you see the ratings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's>, all right. <laughs> Oh, Casarich. Hey, I filled that wall. Casarich. <laughs> well, you filled it in. Oh, okay, I want to thank Sue for leading us again. Okay, there. folks, if you change the channel when I'm talking about God, you're going to die right where you sit. So stay tuned. <laughs> I'm doing a new show. You know the drill. It's on after The Daily Show. You watch it. Or after The Daily Show goes off, you flick around looking for some nudity, you pervert. That's what I do. Then your girlfriend comes in and you quickly change back to my show to show her what a regular guy you are. But then you realize the show is kind of funny. So you decide, ah, the nudity can wait. And you delay your self-manipulation until after your girlfriend falls asleep. Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Brutal honesty. No holes barred. New episode tomorrow night after The Daily Show. Only on Comedy Central. Now, we all know that the poorer you are, the less people care about you. Nobody cares about poor people. Corporations run the world, but they have to realize that the poor people made them and they can break them. If they try to break poor people, they don't start spreading the money around, it's going to come back and ruin them too. They'll be poor. Let's take GE, perfect example of a big corporation, right? GE, light bulbs, commercial military jets, all kinds of stuff, plastics, I don't know, a lot of stuff. Commercial finance, I don't even know what that is, but I know they're in charge of it. Ah. Now, let's say GE has a bad year, right? So what do they do? They have to make cuts in some of the things they own. They might go to like uh, NBC. They own NBC. Now they take a higher percentage off of NBC. Now NBC has to make some cuts. Suddenly little things you barely know to start to happen. Instead of fresh cookies, you get Chips Ahoy in the dressing rooms at Will and Grace. <laughs> they used to give you Coke. Now it's Pathmark ginger ale in the green room of Scrubs. <laughs> you know, sandwiches are gone. It's pretzels and M&Ms. Believe me, I know what that feels like oh, when you have a show. It's, I might know it sooner than I want to, actually, but... <laughs> So they say, hey, NBC, you got to make some cuts. NBC goes to their assets. Look at Saturday Night Live. They own Saturday Night Live. They say, Lorne Michaels, you got to make some cuts. Lorne Michaels looks around. 
He sees he can't fight the stage hands. He'll end, his head will end up behind the speed rack in an Irish bar in Queens. <laughs> can't fight the right is there, the Harvard cartel that makes GE look like a Sacco's Pizza on Ninth Avenue. <laughs> so he goes, what about that ungrateful, miserable bastard, Colin Quinn? <laughs> then suddenly I'm finished off the show. Suddenly I'm finished off the show. <laughs> Damn it. I, I really am finished this time. <laughs> now I have less money. So now when I go to TGIFs, which is another corporation, uh, coincidentally, I don't tip the waitress as much as I used to. And she can't afford to pay her electric bill. So enough people like her don't pay their electric bill and then their lights get cut off. Then GE ends up with another bad year that they caused. And that's why when the little people finally get fed up with the whole system and they march on Washington, they're always carrying candles because the lights are cut off. <laughs> am I, uh... Am I right? Yeah. You cheap bastard. Thank you. Speaking of religion, we like to do something good. Confession is always a good way to get your slate cleaned. So right now, everyone's going to come and confess something real that they did in the last week, and I'll be playing the part of the priest. And as a priest once said to me, on your knees, boys, time to put a little God in your mouth. All right? Okay. Uh, first up is Keith, my son. Shut up. <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Today, I was driving my car, I seen a bunch of pigeons in the street. They were eating, man. They were just minding their own business. I decided to speed the car up a little bit and hit one of the little bastards. I got one of them, and it made me so happy. I chuckled all the way to New York. Well, my son, first of all, I can imagine some letters that we're going to get from one of those animal, bird, whatever a pigeon is. It's like a rat with a pilot's license. I don't know. Uh, but you're fine, my son. It was a pigeon. Everybody hates them. You did the right thing, I guess. <laughs> Say ten Hail Marys and, you know, you'll make yourself a nice ornithology, uh, well. <laughs> oh, folks, you know, it's improv. Sometimes it doesn't work. Ah, uh, damn it. Is that it, Father, or do you have any it. more bad jokes? Ah, uh, that's it. Ah, uh, that's it, my son. Oh. Uh. That really hurts. <laughs> really hurts. white confessional. <laughs> okay. What are your sins, my son? Um, what's with the music? It sounds like I'm in the elevator at Filene's. But, um, I, uh, I masturbated while I was watching a high school cheerleading competition on ESPN2. Um, there was no male. Cheerleaders, it was all female, and uh, <laughs> and I don't even think it was sexual. I, I was they're just so good at what they do. <laughs> it was this was ESPN too. Yes, fine. get the Spice Channel. It's a lot easier. <laughs> Go with God, my son. Wow. I guess the most painful part of the first two is when these two bastards sit there and I want them to leave because there's dead silence and they just sit there waiting for me to bomb even for another five seconds. Move it. Oh, a lovely young lady. What would you like to confess? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 15 years since my last confession. And this week I lied to you. Oh. Lied to the priest or lied to me, Colin? Lied to you, Colin, the priest. All right. How'd you lie to me? I'm afraid to tell you. No, oh, tell me. I'm afraid you're How much be worse could it go for me right now? <laughs> Awful. All right. Last week when we were making out. Yeah. And you asked me if I liked your ass. Uh huh. I lied. <laughs> your ass sucks. <laughs> I only told you that because I wanted to be on the show. 
Well, maybe you should stop trying to judge my ass as just a man's ass and start judging it as an Irish ass, and it won't be so bad. You may go, my child. Go. Thank you, Father. Go. Thank you. Go. Yeah, let's really stretch out Act 4. I wonder why I hate this one. All right. Hi, Greg. Uh, uh, hi, Father. Hi. I've never seen you from this angle before. <laughs> it's been, uh... Even I didn't get that one. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's been uh, uh, 20 years since my last confession. Oh. My, my uh, sin is that I was a, a dirty, two-faced, hypocritical fraud. I was uh, watching a documentary on whorehouses last night on HBO with my wife. And, uh, thanks. And, and I uh, pretended to have absolutely no idea why a married man would want to spend a thousand dollars for an hour with a super hot porn star. I, it was shameless, Father. I was completely shameless. I was like, that's crazy. I mean, he could have spent that on a weekend away at a bed and breakfast with his wife. <laughs> Go with God, my son. Folks, that's the end of the show right there. I don't care if I get the end. Thank you guys for being the first audience ever on the show. Don't worry. If you had a problem with any of the thoughts or opinions expressed tonight, join the crowd. We'll see you tomorrow. Unless we get the old leave home. Thank you, guys.